Hello, my loves. Happy Friday. Oh, my goodness gracious. Okay, we are finishing up uh, our unit on space. So, that's, that's Jurassic Park, and that doesn't belong here. Hold on. That's my alarm. We'll dismiss that alarm. <laughs> Jurassic Park in space. Oh, that should be the next movie. Jurassic Park in space. Oh, we need to hurry up and write to Universal Pictures because they've got to do this. Okay. <laughs> Constellations is what we're talking about today. And we saw a little bit about Constellations. We saw Orion. We talked about Orion's belt. Here's what's really, really cool about constellations. Constellations in the sky are different depending on where you live in the world. Constellations in the Northern Hemisphere, some of them are different than the Southern Hemisphere. Sometimes you can only see certain constellations at a certain time of year because some constellations shift seasonally. Depending on the season, that's when you'll see them. And then some of them are unique and you'll never see them unless you visit the southern hemisphere and some you'll never see unless you visit the northern hemisphere or luck luckily for us we live in the northern hemisphere um and that's because the earth that spins um west east <laughs> i almost forgot the earth spins west east and constellations seem to rise from the east right um just like the sun you know uh rises in the east and sets in the west, rises in the east and sets in the west, because the earth spins west to east. And the same thing with those constellations. Um, so you'll see, you know, like that moon rise. Did you see the, the interesting moons? Um, we had, I got a video last night from, uh, from Janae and her mother about the supermoon. Um, and I mentioned yesterday, you know, guys, there's some really exciting things going out in the sky. Go out and take a look. They sent me an article. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited that you guys are doing science. And how do you do science? You just go outside and you look at the sky. And it was amazing. Oh my goodness. And not only I thought so, but Janae and her mother were really excited. It was cool. You got to see that super moon and it rose right over a house. It was just phenomenal. So, guys, get out there and explore and see what's happening. All right, let me share my screen with you. And screen. There you go. All right, take a look. Well, here's that Ursa Major, and we saw a little Ursa Major. Well, big Ursa Major, because major means big. There's Ursa Minor minor and then ursa major before we had compasses people use constellations in the stars to find their way a constellation is a group of stars that make a shape in the sky so let's look at this picture of ursa major and it looks like a big bear well they drew a bear on top of it so obviously it's a bear but if you kind of ignore the the illustration of a bear and you look at those uh stars you don't see those connecting lines. Those lines aren't connected in the sky. So this really took some imagination. And that's what's really spectacular about science is yes, science is based on facts. And yes, it's based on following certain procedures many times and having something be repeatable. And we repeat those experiments three times over to really make sure that we have good solid results. But not all of science is about experimentation. You don't have to do science experiments with a little lab set in order to be a scientist. Just going out into the sky and looking and using that big beautiful brain of yours and using your imagination, you could say, well, that kind of looks like a bear. Now me, I don't know that it looks like a bear. You know what? Okay. Hear me out. They're making that bear kind of point that way. Is it matching? Is it matching? No. There you go. Because <laughs> I'm backwards. <laughs> so that bear is pointing to the right. Okay. But look at his tail. 
And if you were to so look in the other direction, let's look in the other direction. <laughs> I see. I see an animal like leaping, maybe like a deer or a zebra. Do you see where it's leaping? So here's what I see. Here's its head. And then see how the legs, and look, one, two, three, four legs. It looks like it could be an antelope leaping or a deer or a horse or even a, a giraffe maybe or a sheep. I don't know anything. So that's what I see here. This looks interesting. So I think that's kind of cool how they pictured that as the tail. And then this is the head. But I don't know if that's a tail. That does, bears don't have tails like that. Is that like maybe maybe it's a wing? Is it a winged bear? I don't know what this is. Do you know what this is? I didn't realize. I didn't look very closely. The illustration shows that it could be a, a, it looks like a wing. I have to look into this a little bit more. Before we do, let's take a look at these questions. A blank is a group of stars that make a picture in the star. Does it make a picture? Our imagination makes the picture, right? And we know that's a constellation. Okay. Next, blank is the name of a group of stars in the shape of a bear. All right, that's Ursa Major. And we know that the other one I, I mentioned is called Ursa Minor. Oh, are you just now? I didn't get my points, hold on. Now I got my points, okay. Which of the following is a way that stars have been helpful? Uh, cooks use them to learn about science. Sorry, I got frozen for a second. That was just, someone had some imagination coming up with that one. <laughs> Teachers use them to give us homework. Oh, Miss Allison gives us so much homework. No. Doctors use them to give us medicine. These are interesting. And then sailors use them to find their way during the night. I don't think this question should be that challenging one. This should not be a higher order thinking question because you kind of know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Sailors use them to find their way during the night. Yeah. Okay. Let's learn some more about constellations. Here's a constellation guide at uh, stardate.org. And all I did was I Googled constellations. Okay. So looky here. This is the International Astronomical Union. And it recognizes 88 constellations covering the entire northern and southern sky. So let's think about what that means. The international, that means uh, many nations throughout the world. Astronomical union, that means they work together as a team. They recognize 88 constellations covering the entire northern and southern sky. Here is a selection of the most familiar and easily seen constellations in the northern sky. So we're in the Northern Hemisphere. So this is gonna be the ones that we see. This is not a complete list. This is a list of the Northern Hemisphere constellations and it's a selection of the most familiar. So it's, it doesn't have every single constellation. But it says that the Union recognizes 88 constellations. That means they that means they agree on these constellations. You can go up in the sky and you can create your own constellation. Absolutely. That doesn't mean that, you know, the world agrees with you, but you know, okay. Not everybody agrees to, with me that orange is the perfect color because nothing rhymes with it except purple. <laughs> but that's okay. You know, we keep looking and we keep finding information I can keep searching and I'm really interested in, in knowing what kids in Australia see in the sky. But here we have Aquarius, uh, Aquila the Eagle, Aries, I can't pronounce that name, Auriga, oh that sounds pretty cool, Auriga, the charioteer, okay, he's in a chariot. Um, Boaties, the herdsman, Cancer, the crab, Canis Major, Canis means dog, like the canine tooth, and major means like big, the great dog. Capricornus, the sea goat. I didn't know it was a sea goat. 
I always heard Capricorn was like the goat. A sea goat? That's that's cool. That is cool. We've got Cassiopeia, the queen, Cygnus, the swan, Gemini, the twins, uh, Leo, the lion, Libra, the lyra, Orion. Oh, there's Orion's belt. Pegasus, the flying horse. Perseus, the hero. Um, do these names sound familiar? These are names of like like legendary figures, like um, uh, I guess you could say folk tales. They're mythological stories from you know ancient Rome and, and ancient Greek times. So if you were to see, oh my goodness, my brain just stopped. My brain just stopped. Okay, it'll come to me. I'll be thinking about it in the back of my brain. Um, Pisces, Sagittarius, Scorpius, Taurus the Bull, there's Ursa Major, the Great Bear, and then there's Virgo. The question they're asking is how did the constellations get their names? Most constellation names are Latin in origin, dating from the Roman Empire, but their meanings often originated in the distant past of human civilization. Scorpius, for instance, was given its name from the Latin word for scorpion, but ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs. All right, Juzane, this is for you, because you like that history. Ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs from before 3000 BC. So we're talking 5,000 years ago. Refer to the star group as Ip, the Scorpion King. <gasps> Have you seen that movie with Rock? The ancient Egyptian Scorpion King. I didn't see the movie. So maybe in the movie they talk about the constellation. You let me know. Um, Orion the Hunter bears a Greek name, but had been seen as the hunter hero figure since times of ancient Babylon. So even though we're talking about them today, 5,000 years ago, 6,000 years ago, further into history and prehistory, prehistory means before they were actually writing stuff down, right? And then at that time, they were only sharing with stories. They still had those pictures in the sky. So it's not like, you know, in 1952, some guy looked up and said, okay, that's the great bear. I mean, no, these are, these are storytellers from thousands of years ago. And what's really interesting is everything that we have today, all of our technology, all of our shows and movies and cartoons and songs, all of that is built on things that happened thousands of years ago. When the first artists and scientists look up to the sky and say, how do I explain this? And yeah, I, I would say that it's not really scientific to say that that's a big bear up there, but you're a scientist seeing that and saying, I think that's a big bear. And I think it's there because this happened. Or I think the stars are there because a spirit dog came and ate my grain. That, that's scientific thinking. Even though it's a, it's a tale and it's a story, you're actually trying to explain something scientifically, even though you, you don't really know the answer. But it's a, it's a good start. And then it started thousands and thousands of years ago. Now, now don't, don't misunderstand me. Thousands and thousands of years ago, there was some really strong science and there was some strong math happening. The strongest you've seen. But there's also imagination. And I tend to think there was a lot more imagination back then than there is now. Because I think we are just swamped in other people's imaginations that we don't turn that power off and use our own imagination enough. So that's a good challenge for you. Maybe do an unplugged day and just sit back and use your imagination. I know this would be great for someone like Artem who is really good at using his imagination because he, love, he loves to switch off and, and write comics and draw pictures. And I've got so many artists in my class and so many like imagination people. This would be a great opportunity for, um, for Arena with her art. Adriana's a great artist. Dylan's a great artist. I mean, if I, I can't, I mean, I can count, I can't even count on my fingers how many amazing artists. I have 45 students. 
uh, all 45 students are amazing artists in different ways. You might be an artist with your words, writing a story or creating dance moves. That's art. Or you might be an artist uh, painting a picture or writing a comic book. I mean, this is all art. The way that you see the world makes you an artist. So this is really, 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 really cool. I'm excited about this. Now, look at that next paragraph. Of course, many of the constellation names are more modern. Telescopium, the telescope, well, that's obviously modern. And it's a new, it's a new uh, constellation. In fact, by the 19th century, the night sky had become crowded with overlapping and often contradictory constellation boundaries because different schools of astronomy or people from, you know, like different ideas, um, they made their own star maps, just like I told you, you could, you can make your own, you can make it up because it, it, it's, it's unique to you. But there was a lot of confusion. So they officially organized them and named them. And that means it's official to them. And that means it's official because most people agree. You don't have to agree. You can look up there and say, yeah, um, they call it Ursa Major. I call it the Leaping Deer. You're allowed to do that. That's really cool. Okay. Oh, I think that would be kind of fun. Maybe to, to look at the existing constellations and give it your own name and give it your own like creation stories because like we did with the Milky Way. Oh, that would be so cool. All right. Um, how do they relate to astronomy? You can look that up on your own. I'm really interested in knowing the stories about this because ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs talk about the Scorpion King and we've got, we've got Scorpius up there. Hmm. I wonder what I could find online. Okay, so it just hit me. Clash of the Titans, not the new one. Don't even think about it. The original Clash of the Titans, epic. All right, the best part about it is, well, there's a lot of really good parts, but I think the best part about it is they have like this little owl and he's, um, he's like a mechanical owl. Oh my gosh, he's just so cute. He's just so cute. Um, so they talked about, or, or they talked about, no, it's a movie, Clash of the Titans, and it's all about like these, these mythical figures as gods and goddesses up in the heavens, and Pegasus is a winged horse. It's a flying horse, and um, Perseus actually rides Pegasus as his horse, and Perseus is the hero of the movie, and he has to... And then we've got... Uh, Cassiopeia the Queen is in the movie. And there is, now that I'm thinking about it, there is a giant scorpion in the movie. Scorpius is in that movie. Medusa is in the movie. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of all the things that might be here. Aquarius, Aries the Ram. Um, man, I'm going to have to rewatch it now that I'm thinking about these uh, constellations. And I'm going to look up a better list because we're missing some, right? Okay, train your eyes, move your eyes, glance down here to Pisces the fish. I'm not sure, but that to me doesn't look like it would have been a fish. That is some serious imagination. I would have thought maybe, maybe the snake or something. I don't know. What about Sagittarius the archer? I mean, we've, we've got, uh, they connected to the dots there for just his torso. And I mean, it's made of polygons, but only when it's connected together. So I, you know, I'm not seeing that that would have been an archer. Oh, you know what that looks like to me? It looks like a, a, a crown. It looks like a, like a king's crown, maybe, you know, kind of a wonky one. That's cool. What about the harp? Boop, 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 boop. Mm, I don't see a harp there. I'm fascinated at how they they thought of that. Look at this swan. That kind of looks to me like it could have been a sword. These are fantastic. Guys, I encourage you, go and look at the sky. Or 
find a picture of of the constellations not where the dots are connected connect the dots la 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 you know what find one where the dots are not connected and connect them yourself just for fun use your imagination okay i will i'm going to have a good weekend because it's mother's day weekend and um i heard a little i heard a little rumor that um my daughter is working on uh fixing up my uh, art studio for me because you guys saw that i'm kind of cramped here right i'm whispering because i don't want her to, to know that i know because my art studio is like really tiny and cramped and um i heard that she's working on something to to create for me a big art studio so i'm excited about mother's day and i'm planning something huge for my mother i don't, I don't think she can i hope she doesn't watch this video don't tell her, but I am landscaping the backyard for her because the backyard's kind of, mm, eh. I'm going to landscape and get some big, beautiful trees. She loves fruit trees like lemon trees and mango trees. I'm going to get some big, beautiful trees and some flowers, and I'm going to put them around because she and I like to sit outside. We listen to the, to the birds. Birds are constantly talking. We have some squirrels. And our neighbor has roosters, and I love hearing those roosters all day long, because they don't just do it at sunrise like in the cartoons. Roosters all day long. I, we love it. So we sit outside, and we relax, and we talk, and we just listen to the sounds. We enjoy the breeze. Oh, my goodness, being outside is so wonderful. And I want to make it even better for her, because she loves plants, and she loves flowers, and she loves fruit. So that's my surprise. I, what are you planning for for your Mother's Day? And it doesn't have to be anything that you have to go out and buy in the store. It could simply be like making a breakfast, making a card. And you can put so much effort into something so little, and it makes it really important. And that's the kind of stuff that I like. I love when I get little notes from students and, you know, it's really sweet when people buy me, you know, flowers and candy and things like that. But I got to tell you, the best is when I get those cards and you guys are writing. The best is when Mikael made me, uh, he gave me two of them, actually, the Star Wars posters. I mean, gorgeous. He, he used paint and everything. I mean, oh, man fantastic. You could tell he really put some thought and effort into it. Those are the things that I love. I bet you your moms would love that too. Okay. Big hugs, big kisses. And you know what? Mother's Day, it's not just for moms, it's for grandmas and it's for aunties and it's for neighbors. And yeah, it could be for dads too. Absolutely. You know, um, Mother's Day is not really for a person who's only a mother. It's, t it's about for somebody who has, who has mothering instincts, someone who takes care of you like a mother, someone who loves you like a mother, kisses your boo-boos like a mother. You know, it's for everybody. All right, so think of something amazing. Let me know what you find. Okay, I love you guys, bye. I don't know why I'm still whispering. I don't know why I'm still whispering. Why are you still whispering, Miss Hope?